Taking all of the previously mentioned requirements into account, a specific technical collider project has entered the picture. What are the main parameters of this facility at the Nika complex? The circumference of the collider ring is about 500 meters. The collider consists of two bending sections, the so-called bending arcs, and two straight sections where the principal detector facilities and additional systems are located. The bunch length at the collider is set to be 60 centimeters, due to the requirements of the regular distribution of luminosity in the interaction area. The maximum acceptable bunch number is limited by the capabilities of parasitic collisions in the detector, and the bunch number amounts to 22. The emittance has been chosen to be almost equal to the acceptance of the accelerator. The number of particles, depending on the energy, varies from 2 times 10 to the power of 8 to 2.5 to the power of 9 per bunch. Accordingly, an injection chain and an accumulation scheme make it possible to provide such changes in bunch intensity. Whereas our design luminosity of 10 to the power of 27 falls in the most interesting energy range, approximately 3 to 4.5 giga electron volt per nucleon. This is the energy field where the maximum high density of baryonic matter is expected in colliding beams. Unfortunately, at an energy level of lower than 3 giga electron volt per nucleon, the luminosity decreases due to the space charge limitation. Nevertheless, in the major part of the energy range, the design parameters can be achieved. Whereas the low energy range, which smoothly transitions into the energy of a fixed target experiment, provides sufficient luminosity to collect statistical data. How has the collider equipment been arranged inside the facility? The bending sections consist mainly of bending magnets and quadrupole lenses, which need to ensure correct betatron oscillation frequencies of the accelerator. The center of the straight sections is occupied by a detector. There are about 9 meters allocated for each detector. The largest part of the remaining straight section is occupied by the RF or radio frequency system. Why has the RF system turned out to be so complex? Beam accumulation is performed using special resonator types, the so-called barrier resonators, which create a non-sinusoidal field in its gap and divide the collider circumference into fields of stable and unstable motion. A beam is accumulated in the stable motion field and is injected either into the second field of stable motion or into the unstable motion field. Gradually, newer portions are added to the accumulated beam. Thereafter, the RF system, which ensures beam accumulation, shuts down. The beam occupies the entire circumference of the accelerator, and it first gets split into 22 bunches by one RF system, and then, from those 22 bunches, bunches of the required length are formed with the help of the third RF system. That is to say, such an accumulation scheme, independent from the injection chain intensity, has cost us a few dozen meters of the accelerator circumference and a loss of luminosity may happen accordingly. Besides that, from the devices needed for the accelerator to function, a system of electron and stochastic cooling is deployed on the circumference of the collider. In case, for example, an emergency at the accelerator, the beam has to be extracted from it in a regular way. There is an emergency beam dumping system and a beam feedback system designed to suppress coherent bunch oscillations. To have an accelerator with a minimum circumference, one needs to make the beam convergence and beam divergence sections as short as possible. The two storage rings, in which beams circulate in the opposite directions, are allocated one above the other. To combine the beams, they have to be brought to a common median plane, to have a common area where beams move toward one another and then to diverge them. 
for the beam convergence and divergence sections to occupy the minimum amount of space, it is necessary to have the smallest possible distance between the two rings that are aligned vertically. The minimum distance could be provided only with the use of superconducting magnets. Otherwise, the room temperature magnet structure would be so complex that it would most probably be technically infeasible. It is not technically difficult to make two magnets with closely positioned beam chambers for superconducting magnets. The NICA project is intended to use two of those aperture magnets. The distance between the median planes of the rings is approximately 32 centimeters, which allows minimization of the beam convergence and divergence section. To the present day, a number of questions have come up. It is one thing to show theoretically that it is possible but it is a different matter entirely to demonstrate it in practice. To date, although the collider has not yet been constructed, prototypes of dipole and quadrupole magnets have already been combined and tested, and it has been demonstrated that the necessary field quality may be obtained with the use of this technology. Cooling systems are essential for the functioning of the collider. A potential producer has already been found for the electron cooling systems, for which there exists practically no alternatives in the modern world, since almost every electron cooling system for accelerators in various countries around the globe was created at the Butkur Institute in Novosibirsk, where this method of cooling had first been implemented. The Butker Institute has fairly recently constructed a cooling system with parameters close to those that are required for the Nika Collider, and created such a system for the Cozy Accumulator, which operates in the German town of Juliech. The beam cooling results have shown that this system is capable of meeting the needs of the Nika Collider. And therefore, the development of this system has been concluded for the moment. In terms of stochastic cooling, Russia has no experience in this area. The first tests were performed in the early 80s on a proton beam at the Butkur Institute. But since then, these technologies have not been developed in Russia. In fact, for the Nika Collider, we have to create this technology from scratch. The development of stochastic cooling within the design and experimental developments for the NICA project has been carried out in collaboration with leading centers abroad. Specialists from CERN, the Julich Research Center and the Center for Heavy Ion Research in Darmstadt have all taken part in the project design. To run tests and gain some experience in working with such a system, a test cooling channel and a stochastic cooling channel have been created at the nucleotron. In 2013, deuteron beam cooling was demonstrated for the first time in Russia. At first, it was cooling of a divergent beam. In the years that followed, cooling of a grouped beam was achieved with a grouping factor approaching the requirements of the Nika Collider. As a result, the most complex intellectual systems for the Nika Collider are in the manufacturing stage.